Good evening and welcome to the news at half past seven. My name is Chidima Oranwa. Making the headlines, Abga candidates for Anambra Central Senatorial District uh, Wume seeks cancellation of results. Over 2 million naira worth of knapsack sprayers distributed to 100 youth farmers in the state. Presidential election results coalition sets to enter 12th day. Indian fighter jets enter Pakistan territory in non-preemptive action. And now the detail of the news. The senator representing Anambra Central and Afghan candidate in last Saturday's senatorial election, Senator Victor May, has called for the cancellation of Anambra Central National Assembly election, saying that the process was not free, fair, credible or transparent. He spoke in a press briefing today at his country home, Agalozibo, a Northern local government area. Correspondent Valentine Mbadoga has the details. We highlighted INEX inability to announce Idemili South results as an evidence, maintaining that INEC lost control of the exercise. He added that the election, which recorded so many malpractices, violence, malfunctioning of some INEC sensitive materials such as the Cadrida, cannot be accepted as it goes against the rules stipulated by INEC to guide the process. The mere fact that the Anambra Central Senatorial District uh, election result has not been declared uh, uh, points to uh, the fact that all was not well with the election on Saturday. Um, the INEC clearly lost control of the election because from the guideline uh, made by INEC uh, the INEC chairman emphasized time without number that accreditation must be done with the card reader. He advised INEC to be bold enough to stand against such injustice by cancelling the pulling units across the zone, which their results did not reconcile as the number of accredited voters must tally with the number of votes cast. INEC should be able to upload their card reader um, uh, uh, records and uh, compare. Um, the number of accredited voters in the polling units with what their candidate, uh, you know, captured. If there are discrepancies, they should be able to cancel the exercise and uh, repeat the election. I feel that's the only way to ensure that everybody will be satisfied. If you say that you must use card reader to do accreditation and you will not accept any result, from any polling unit where accreditation was not done with the card reader. How can you now proceed? You are you disobeying your own rules and guidelines. And those, those guidelines are made uh, pursuant to the Electoral Act, the powers given to INEC. So the, the guidelines are very important in, in the conduct of elections. He, however, enjoined all his supporters across the zone to remain peace-loving as they wait for the resolution of the matter by INEC. From Aglusibo in a natural local government area, Valentine Mbadoga reporting for ABS News. The United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF has commended Anambra State Government for its support and commitment towards UNICEF water, sanitation and hygiene wash programs in the state. The wash specialist UNICEF Enugu, Mr. Ferdinand Njoy, made the commendation during a two-day workshop an institutional triggering and sensitization meeting for stakeholders at the Agata local government area aimed at the attainment of local government area wide open defecation free status. Bless no chindle now completes the story. The workshop, which was organized by EU UNICEF in collaboration with Anambra State Water Supply and Sanitation Agency, Rowasa, attracted traditional rulers, the clergy, teachers, representatives of various wash communities in Agwata, and state UNICEF consultants, amongst others. Represented by the Zonal Wash Consultant, UNICEF Enugu, Mr. Toyin Adisa, Mr. Njue explained that the major role of UNICEF in the implementation of wash programs in the state is to ensure that investment made is sustained and the agency does this through the building of the capacity of wash institutions. It's to our disadvantage, it's at our benefit. Let us ensure that we employ every household in our communities to have toilets. And besides that toilet, there must be hand-washing facilities. 
Speaking, the Transition Committee Chairman of Aguata, Honorable Eche Ezibe, represented by the Head of Local Government Administration, Sajaja Huanghuo, said that poor access to safe drinking water and inadequate sanitation were the causes of regular outbreaks of cholera and diarrhea, urging the people of Aguata to strive towards achieving total open defecation free in their various communities. And I have said that I will share the efforts I will make. At the same time, I equally requested that more efforts should be made by strengthening some of the institutions we have at the local government level, like our public health units. Contributing, the permanent secretary, public utilities, Mr. Douglas Mba, maintained that portable water supply and ODF in Aguata should be restored and transformed through the joint efforts of the communities and charged them to always maintain their borehole and other facilities to increase their lifespan. I want to have a happen. When I talk to you, when I talk to you, when I talk to Everywhere we opportunity to tell people. If you know, you can see that the bad and bad guy, not the bad guy. On his part, the program manager, Ruasa, Mr. Victor Ezehuo, said the essence of the program was to get the support of all the communities in Aguata Kansu area, identify their successes and failures in ODF, advising the people of the area to strive to achieve ODF status in their local government for a healthier environment for themselves and states at large. We believe, strongly believe, in the support of big ways. The support of the LTO watch team, the support from UNICEF, support from other member state government, the clergy, the market leaders, the park leaders, every other institution, the schools, that by March, April, this year, that we will definitely get into that mark of LTO YODA. Some participants, engineer Amechi Akaneme, who is the president general of Umwana community in Aguata, and Mrs. Ebere Okonkwo, women leader, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, attested to impacts of UNICEF wash in their communities and pledged to contribute towards ODF totally in Aguata. From Aguata Council Headquarters, Ekulobia, Blessing Uchendo, ABS News. Over 2 million naira worth of knapsack sprayers and proper dressing attires have been distributed to 100 specially trained EFAD value chain development program youth farmers as empowerment measure. The youth selected from the five participating council areas were specially trained in modern spraying technology, pesticide calibrations and proper dressing attires by EFAD VCDP at IITA Ibador. Agri correspondent Abeleza reports that the distribution took place at the State Agricultural Development Program Office in Oka. Her report. Distributing the items proper, the state program coordinator, IFAD Value Chain Development Program, Mr. Namda Aguncha said, within January and February this year, they have trained 150 selected youth farmers, out of which 20 were carefully selected from each council area. Mr. Aguncha, who asked them to form cooperative societies in their various council areas to be giving services to farmers to meet their pest control needs, noted that farmers are by this arrangement discouraged to go into pesticide control true by themselves for safety reasons, while announcing that the empowerment is on matching ground basis, where the beneficiary will pay 30% of the cost and the effort will offset 70%. Mr. Agoncha described it as the first of its kind in the history of VCDP states and highly recommended by the VCDP National Office. To encourage them, take uh, safe measures while using um, agrochemicals. They should use a knapsack and get well kitted. We've, we've seen cases, we've seen casualties where people use this thing wrongly and they're paying for it. And also to create jobs for them. They can render services to uh, farmers in the communities, both in their farms and in their house, even in the markets and other public places to bring down the pest load that causes diseases. The State Agri Production Officer, IFAD VCDP, Mr. Emmanuel Chukufolo, made it clear that as a result of the toxic nature of pesticide and environmental pollution, the youths were trained on the effective and economic safe handling of pesticides. My charge is that they will now go 
and serve our farmers. They were because we have already doing our trainings with all farmers. Discourage them because some of them are not well equipped, and because of the hazardous nature of uh, uh, these uh, uh, agri chemicals, we train this special spray squad so that they will now serve the farmers at a token payment. We discover that it will also be uh, serving them. We, uh, we help the farmers a lot because it is more economical. Some of the beneficiaries, including Pastor Benjamin Onyebuchi from Mbaku, Oka North Local Government Area, and Mr. Chukwe Mecca Neli from Umweri, Anambra East Council Area, while expressing their profound joy over the empowerment, are sure to make a living from it and also train more youths. For the benefit in it, number one, this is a money making venture. Something that I will use to make money because farming is business. I will spread for farmers and I earn a living and I get money and profit from it. And that's why the A5 value chain are equipping us. This thing, before it will get spoiled, I might have made money from it and even have money to buy the bigger machine. It's a spare machine. I will use it to do work. For which people? For the farmers. The empowerment program climaxed with individual practical food kitting and collection of the items. These are the 100 modern spraying kits for 100 youth farmers in the five participating council areas of value chain development program in Anambra State. From the Agricultural Development Program Office in Oka, I am Abele Eze reporting for ABS News. Anambra State Community and Social Development Agency, in partnership with the World Bank, has kicked off a two-day training of the second batch of Community Project Management Committee for the Community Social Development Project, CSDP. The CPMC trainees, who are drawn from the five selected communities of Uwenu in Orca North, Ndikelyongu, Nanka and Omo, all in Orumba North, as well as Umambo, in IMLM local government areas are in attendance to equip themselves with the requisite knowledge and skill needed for the implementation of community and social development projects CSDP. Correspondent Chibu Zobidike attended the training and now reports. CSDP, a community-driven development project, focuses on building and rebuilding social and natural resource infrastructural services at the community level through empowering the communities with grants to develop, implement, and monitor the projects. The trainees selected from the five communities are the second batch of the ten communities selected for the program. Speaking in an opening remark, the general manager, CSDA, Mr. Chode Moji, who revealed that the projects seeks to identify the poor communities in the state. Thus, the training is to prepare CPMC members before disbursement of cash from the World Bank so as to achieve fruitful results. Expressing delight with the active response of the members while urging the participants to utilize the opportunity given to them, Mr. Moji, who solicited for the support of all to complement the effort of the state government for the best of the initiative. Now, for us to begin to fund them, we need to train them on how to use the money in line with the financing agreement signed between the federal government and the World Bank and the one signed between the federal government and the state government. So the whole idea is to ensure that money is being, will, be, will be spent for the tenant purpose and through the right procedure and processes. Delivering a keynote address titled Community Development Plans, CDPs, the Operations Manager, CSDA, Mrs. Uche Wazibu, explained that the formulation of CDP is the sole responsibility of CPMC members on behalf of the entire community to plan, design, part finance, as well as implement socially inclusive and environmentally sustainable micro projects. I encourage all the community members, especially the CPMC members, whom the community have trusted so much to elect to take care of this implementation of this project, to please to live up to the trust vested on them. We, are, we look forward to them to ensure that the objective for, for which this project is brought to this uh, state is achieved. 
Some participants, including Pastor Cosmas Okafo from Ubuenu and Dr. Ngozi Kano from Undi Keliongu, appreciated the state government and World Bank for the community-driven development project, which is rooted in community needs and are sure to follow the laid-down principles governing the project in order to achieve a better future for their communities. See, training is so much interesting and very, very good because now I learn a lot of things especially in this uh, bookkeeping and the other financing. It, I'm assuring the government that the work will go peacefully and very, very pro progressive. I appreciate what World Bank is doing. And if other agencies are doing like that, uh, sky will be our limit. My people are happy. Everybody in the community are happy. Myself, I'm happy. And I bet you we are going to do, we are, we are not leaving any stone on top to ensure that this project succeeds. Financial management, gender and vulnerable issues, mainstreaming were the top of issues discussed at the program. In Oka, Chibuzo Bidiki, ABS News. Still on the news tonight, the Anglican Bishop of Agatha Diocese, Right Reverend Samuel Ezofo says, a worthy service must meet certain conditions in order to be acceptable to God. In a sermon at the Cathedral Church of St. John, Ecolobia, in our Guadalupe government area during a rededication service for members of the parochial church committee, the assistant women executives and leaders of various church organizations in our Guadalupe diocese. Bishop Ezel for maintaining that without holiness, no mortal shall see God, pointing out that mere religious observance is not acceptable to God. We have details from our studio. The prelate who said that it is dangerous for one to be alive and become history charged those working in the Lord's vineyard to be honest while discharging their duties. Bishop Ezofo, who spoke on the topic worthy service, stressed the need for Christians to imbibe the virtues of humility in the service to God and humanity. Service for Allah is work, but our work done for the benefit of other people, primarily. In their various interviews, some members of the various organizations that were rededicated during the service, Mrs. Gloria Iloka from Oko Achidukenri, Mr. Gonna Odozo from Amuyi Achidukenri, and Mr. Mega Delibe from Ezira Achidukenri, promised to use their individual positions in winning souls for Christ. the service, which was conducted by the cathedral administrator, Venerable Tijo Kinwampo, featured a special prayer for peaceful coexistence in the country, administration of oaths of allegiance on the executives of the various church organizations by the bishop and anthem by the cathedral choir. Collation of presidential election results by INEC has entered the fourth day since the collation center was declared open by the commission at 6 p.m. on Sunday. So far, President Buhari is in clear lead in the results collated so far closely followed by the candidate of the PDP in what has been described by many as a close call. Meanwhile, the Senate resumed plenary today but adjourned over its inability to form a quorum. This is the first session since the presidential and national assembly elections. The lawmakers were scheduled to resume on February 19, but the resumption was postponed to 26 as a result of the change of date of the elections. Upon resumption, the Senate leader, Ahmed Lawan, moved that the Senate adjourn as those present were not up to the number of senators required to form a quorum. He explained that while some lawmakers are out of town, and are yet to get the results of the election of their senatorial districts. Others are busy making sure the election progress goes smoothly. 
exports of Kwa Ibo, the country's largest oil grade, will rise to 253,000 barrels per day from 215,000 in March, while exports of Boni Light will rise to around 242,000 barrels per day from 174,000 in March. Kwa Ibo was the last indicated at a premium of $1.85 a barrel to date at Brent on change from levels last week. West African crude differentials we are said to have held steady yesterday as Nigeria loading programs were still emerging and an industry event in London kept activity fairly muted. A shortage of comparable Iranian grades as well as heavy swell Venezuelan crude due to the United States sanctions, has left major refiners in countries such as China struggling to secure enough distilled rich cargoes, which has favored Angolan grades fairly heavily, especially given favorable shipping economics. Taiwan CPC last week issued a buy tender for light sweet crude for loading in April. The tender remained valid until February 23, but the winner had not yet emerged on Monday. Indian fighter jets today crossed into Pakistani territory, conducting what the foreign ministry in New Delhi termed a non-military preemptive action against armed group Jaish al Mohammed, dramatically escalating tensions between the nuclear armed neighbors weeks after a suicide attack in the disputed Kashmir region. Pakistan reported the Indian airspace incursion with military spokesman Major General Asif Gafur saying its Air Force jets were scrambling to respond, forcing the Indian aircraft to release payload in haste while escaping. Indian Foreign Secretary Vijay Gokil, however, asserted that the jets had hit their target and that a very large number of jet territory terrorist trainers, senior commanders, and group of jihadis who we are being trained by Fidayeen action, we are eliminated. C. Uday Bashkar, the director of the Society for Policy Studies based in New Delhi, said that India had sent a very firm signal. He said that the fact that air power has been used for the first time against terrorist target signal to Pakistan that India is demonstrating resolve in terms of using military power, particularly air power. And now sports. Chelsea has fined goalkeeper Kepa Arizabalaga one week's wages after his best up with Maurizio Sarri during the Caraboa Cup final at Wembley. The two men held talks over the keeper's public display of defiance towards the end of extra time of the match, which the Blues lost to Manchester City on penalties. Both men brushed it off at a misunderstanding at full time, but Aria Balaga has personally apologized to Sari, his teammate and the club, in full acknowledgement he made a big mistake. His wages will go to charity. Sari said that it is up to the club to discipline Kepper according to the club rules. But for him, the matter is now closed. And that's just about it on the news. But before we go, a quick reminder that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by logging on to our website, www.absradiotv.com. Like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash ABS Radio Television. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ABS Radio TV. And now the main point again. APCA candidate for Anabra Central Senatorial District in May is seeking cancellation of results. Over 2 million naira worth of knapsack sprayers have been distributed to 100 youth farmers in the state. Presidential election result collation is set to enter third day. Indian fighter Jed has entered Pakistani territory in non-preemptive action. That's it on the news tonight. Many thanks for watching. My name is Chidima Orangwa. Good night.